think boundaries keep us safe. They're not to keep us locked in. They're to keep the good things in and the bad things out. This is my yard. This is what I'm, I'm not everybody's happy when you set <laughs> no. boundaries. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I, right. I, no, I actually had to do that with my, with my mom in my marriage. And I remember thinking, God was like, he actually, you know, I, I didn't have a counselor, but he actually said, you are entangled with your mother. And he said, you're tying to untie knots and I need to take the sword of my spirit and I need to sever what is unhealthy. And he said, because you're enabling. You're Mm -hmm. enabling, you feel responsible for her happiness. Mm -hmm. If you're happy, you feel guilty because she's not happy. Mm -hmm. If, if, you know, I mean, if your kids are good, you feel guilty because you were a bad kid. I mean, so it was all of this stuff. And I remember how I, I, I kneeled down and I said, and it didn't seem right because she's a Christian and everything. And I was like, God, I don't know how to do this. And he said, let me pass my sword of the word. And I saw like an angel just in, in my mind's eye and it just severed. And he said, you owe her nothing but to love her. Wow. And, and, and so I remember the next time I, I saw my mom, she was like, something's changed because she didn't have that control thing oh, on me right, anymore. Right. From as long as I can remember, somehow I felt responsible for my mother's choices, my mother's happiness, and for my mother. Now, there's a difference between honoring your parents and feeling like you are responsible for the emotional well-being of that person. And so I was in a deep time of prayer, and God began to deal with me and saying, you're actually intervening on some stuff I want to do in your mom's life. I want to touch her, and you're trying to be her rescuer. You're trying to be her savior. You need to back up out of the way because it's unhealthy for her and it's unhealthy for you. A lot of times when you're in a position like me, I was the child that was the fixer. I was the child that was the intermediate. I was the child that was go between my my mother and my father, my mother and my brother. And there came to a place where Jesus was like, you're not the mediator. I am the mediator and you need to let go of this. And so when I did that, it kind of shifted some stuff. Like if somebody is betraying, 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 you almost have to say, I love you, but this is unhealthy. I'm not playing this role anymore in your life. And I've had to do that with family members where I say, I love you and I am here for you, but we're not interacting. Like you get in a pattern with them and you're like, this isn't healthy for you and it's not healthy for me. So I'm, I'm pulling back and... Yeah. We'll have to we'll have to reassess this. And I, I'm I love you, yeah. and I forgive you. Right. I'm not angry because yeah. a lot of times people think that when they forgive somebody, that, you, that, that they have to be restored no. or or what. But forgiveness is what we're commanded to. Restoration is different, and restoration requires repentance. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's a revelation that I've been doing something wrong. So we were mm-hmm. all forgiven yeah. from the cross, but That's we right. were not saved until we repented and That's we said, right. "I'm wrong." You're right. That's and right. then there was a restoration. Right. And so, <laughs> and the truth is most moms are their children's servants. And I'm not saying you can't serve, but right. I'm supposed to, yeah, train. I'm supposed to train my kids That's right. and love my husband. And most women are trying to train their husbands <laughs> and loving their kids. Oh. And so when that gets off, to leave on that. <laughs> but when that gets off balance, the whole family gets off balance. Jeez. Yeah. Jeez. That so, is so true. Wow. I was way busy training John, yeah. not my kids. Wow. So I had to shift that. Restoration is hard work. And so if somebody is saying, I'm sorry for the consequences, but they actually don't really understand what's happened, then they actually are not really in the position to be safe or to do the hard work. And how I can kind of say this is, you know, when you have a restoration, it actually is kind of modeled when we see Jesus. Jesus forgave all of us from the cross. He said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. That's forgiveness. And and often we are dealing with people, we think that they know what they're doing. Usually they don't know how how much they have hurt us. No no way for them to understand the wounding of what they've done. And so that's one of the best things we can ever do. Father, forgive them. They don't know what they did. Christian families are not perfect. I haven't met one person who grew up in an incredible home that didn't have issues. Why? Because the world is broken. All of our lives are touched by difficulties of relationship or miscommunication or you know areas of pain that we didn't expect. So no family is perfect. You might as well just step off that and realize that we want to do our best. We want to show up as the best person that God's called us to, but ultimately, 
We need a savior, right? And that's why Jesus came is to help us. So don't get stuck in the perfection cycle. Be who God's called you to be and God will fill in the gaps that you cannot do yourself.